What makes a juicier, smokier, and generally better brisket? An offset smoker like the Oklahoma Joe's Longhorn or a drum smoker like the Bronco? We're putting these two smokers head to head in this experiment and we're gonna see what the difference is. So let's get smoking. Welcome to the Smoke Lab, guys, the show where I do barbecue experiments you would never do at home so you can learn from my experience. If you guys have any requests for experiments you'd like to see on this show, drop them in the comment section below. And as always, all of the show notes and recipes are in the description section below if you'd like to follow along. Now, offset smokers. They burn splits of hardwood in a firebox and all of that smoky hot air goes up into the cook chamber over the top of the meat, cooking from the top down and then out the stack. The upside of an offset is that you get really smoky flavor, better smoke flavor than any other smoker. The downside, well, it's difficult to master and it takes quite a bit of experience to manage the fire in the firebox to maintain good temperatures. And it's a lot different than a drum smoker like this Oklahoma Joe's Bronco, which slowly burns charcoal and wood chunks at the bottom of the drum, releasing hot air and smoke up towards the meat and cooking from the bottom up. The upside of a drum smoker is it's extremely easy to use for a beginner, it's easy to learn, and it's basically set and forget. And the downside, well, is there a downside? Is there a difference between a brisket cooked on an offset smoker and a drum smoker? To test it out, I'm using two choice grade briskets I trimmed the night before, and now I'm seasoning them with a basic rub which I prepared by mixing a quarter cup of kosher salt, a quarter cup of coarse ground black pepper, and a tablespoon of Lowry's seasoned salt, using a bit of vegetable oil to bind the rub together and giving it a good shake. After the briskets are rubbed, I'm firing up the Longhorn with my Oklahoma Joe's charcoal lighter, and once it burns down a bit, I'm going to start adding splits, maybe one every 30 or 40 minutes to maintain my target temps of 250 degrees plus or minus 25 degrees, give or take. Moving over to the Bronco, I'm lining up the bottom of the charcoal basket with some wood chunks, then I'm dumping some lump charcoal over them, and finally I'm laying down some more wood chunks on top, so we get plenty of smoke flavor. Then I'm lowering the baskets into the bowels of the Bronco and lighting it with my charcoal starter. You only really need to light the very center, leaving the outside unlit to slowly burn over time. After it's all lit, I'm adding the baffle plate back in and placing a water pan over it. I like doing this because it protects the bottom of the brisket from the radiant heat of the fire, so we just get nice gentle convective heat coming up and getting to the brisket. And then the top rack goes on, the lid gets shut, and I'm keeping my intake and exhaust dampers wide open. As soon as the temps get to around 50 degrees lower than my target temp of 275 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm shutting the intake down to setting number one, almost fully closed. And that's going to allow the temperature to slowly creep up and lock in at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm placing the brisket on the Bronco and foiling the edges because that's where there's going to be the most convective heat and I don't want the edges to dry out. This guy is going to sit on the Bronco now at 275 for the next six hours. Now, moving over to the Longhorn, I'm putting the brisket on the far left side, point towards the firebox, and a really big pan to the right. We're going to let that smoke for four hours at 250 degrees, give or take, plus or minus 25 degrees at any given time. And now both briskets are going to soak up some of that smoke before we move on to the next stage of our brisket marathon. It's now the four hour mark, so I'm rotating the offset smoker brisket to help it cook more evenly, and I'm going to ramp temperatures up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, again, plus or minus 25 degrees for the next eight hours. Now, at the six hour mark, it's a good time to look at the brisket and add some more water to the water pan in the Bronco. In my case, the Bronco is no longer able to hold 275 about six hours in, so I'm taking the brisket out, the water pan comes out, and I'm filling up the charcoal basket with fresh wood chunks and charcoal. It was a really cold day that day, and I was using really cheap quality lump charcoal, so if it's a warm day for you and you're using better quality lump charcoal, you're definitely going to get burn times greater than six hours. Now jumping ahead to the 12 hour mark, the brisket is now probing at 190 degrees Fahrenheit internal on average, and it's actually looking really nice. Look at that bark. That is absolutely beautiful. So I'm taking it off the Bronco, wrapping it in butcher paper with beef tallow and clarified butter. Then it goes into an aluminum pan with a quarter cup of water added. It gets foiled tightly, and then it's held at 150 degrees for the next 15 to 20 hours. Check the description section below for instructions on how to do that. Same deal with the offset smoker brisket. We're 12 hours in, and it's hitting 190 degrees internal, so I'm taking it off the cooker, I'm wrapping it the same way I wrap the drum brisket, and it's also going to hold at 150 degrees for the next 15 to 20 hours until it's time for the taste test. 
All right, guys, I've got the offset smoker brisket here. I just unwrapped it. It's been resting for 18 hours in my sous vide holding chest at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's looking actually really nice. Typical offset brisket. It's got a nice rendered fat cap. If I press down into it here, then it doesn't spring back. It just kind of, if I push really hard, my finger would go right through it. So that's a good sign. It's got some crispy areas that got crisped up on the top of the fat cap because all of that heat from the offset smoker comes up from the firebox and up and over the brisket and cooks it from the top down. So we get a nice, really crispy bark. And then during the long rest period, it gets backed off a little bit and a little bit tenderized. So this is a good looking brisket. I'm pretty happy with it so far. I'm interested to see what the uh, drum smoker brisket looks like, but for now I'm going to cut into this and see how it tastes. Okay, I'm gonna slice into this guy now. And before I do that, actually, I'm just gonna give it a quick temp with my Thermapen. Uh, 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 it's about 135. Usually I like to cut into it around 140, so it's a bit lower, but I was taking a bunch of pictures, so that's okay. I'm going to slice into this guy now and we'll see how good it is. It's feeling pretty nice. Oh, that looks amazing. All right, guys, now I'm going to taste this brisket. I'm starting with the point and it looks absolutely amazing. Mmm. That's really good. Perfect offset smoker flavor, really deep smoke flavor, really tender brisket, perfectly salted, perfectly seasoned, perfectly cooked. I don't know what to say about this brisket. It's just awesome. I'm really interested to see what the drum smoker brisket tastes like compared to this one. All right, this is the brisket that we cooked in the Bronco and I just held it at 150 for the past 18 hours. Let's check it out. This brisket actually looks really good. I was expecting it to not have as dark a bark as it has because when I took it off the Bronco, it wasn't looking very dark, but this looks absolutely amazing. The flat looks good. The point looks good. Doesn't feel like it has any dry bits. Maybe it has some dryness underneath. No, it's really jello-y. Looks like it has a lot of wobbliness. So it's about uh, 144. I like to cut my briskets when they're around 140. So this is perfect. Go into the point here, 143, and it's probing really nicely. Go into the flat, probing pretty nice. The flat might be a little bit undercooked. Actually, no, flat's actually pretty good. The point might be a bit undercooked. Usually my points are a lot more tender. And I think the reason for that is because we have a lot of bottom up heat coming off of the Bronco and not much top down heat other than any radiant heat and convective heat and air that's getting sort of captured in the top Top of the dome or reflected back down onto the top of the brisket. So we might have an undercooked flat, but we won't know until we slice into it. So let's slice into it and we'll find out. Okay, I'm gonna give this guy a slice right down the middle, right about here. Looks good to me. This is tender, guys. I can already feel it. I'm gonna make a guess. This is gonna look really good. Okay, let's open it up. Ooh, look at that. That looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> This never gets old, guys. I love doing this. I love seeing the results of a perfectly cooked brisket. I'm excited to try it. So let's slice off a little piece of the flat here for the taste test, which will be performed by moi. I'm gonna get some board tallow on this. Just get some tallow on there. The tallow prevents the meat from oxidizing, so that's why I always cover it up with some tallow before I set it to the side. And we'll do some of the point here. I'll just do big old chunk of burnt end here and I'll slice that up and then I'll do a couple slices of the point here and these are going to be a little bit thicker. I'll go right in the center. This one looks pretty nice. Again, I'm getting some tallow on it. Give you guys a little close up there. Whew, that is looking good. The pull test. Oh, it's pulling apart so tough. No, I'm just kidding. It pulls apart like nothing. Look at this. Oh man, that looks absolutely amazing. Actually, I was joking about it, but it does have a little bit of tug to the point. So I think my theory that the heat didn't really get to the top of the point as much as say an offset smoker does is true in this Bronco because the point is not as cooked as usual, but let me give it a taste. It's still really good, it's tender. It has smoke flavor, but it's nowhere near as close to the smoke flavor from the offset smoker brisket. And the point is a little bit less rendered than I usually get on my offset smoker briskets, including the one that I just tested. The fat cap is pretty well rendered. You can see that it has a little bit of a yellow ring here on the outside of the fat cap. And that's a good sign. That tells me that the fat cap was getting some heat and got rendered properly to unlock those flavors from the rendered fat. Typically, if you're not getting enough heat to your point, then you'll get areas like this one right here where it's kind of white and opaque. You want the uh, yellowish caramelized uh, caramel color 
fat like this because that tastes way better. Now I'm going to try a piece of the flat. I'll give you guys a close up there. We'll pull it apart. Pulls apart way easier than the point. So I think this got more heat from below, obviously. Really good, same conclusion. Smoky, but less smoky than the offset smoker brisket. It's probably more overcooked than usual in the flat, but not, not too overcooked that it's pot roasty in flavor or anything like that. It's a perfect brisket. It's kind of nitpicking, but I prefer the offset smoker brisket that I cooked. It has more smoke flavor. It uh, had a better bark. It had better rendering in the point and it had better rendering on the fat cap. And it just in general tasted a little bit more evenly cooked. This brisket was more overcooked in the flat underneath and less cooked in the point above because we were getting all the direct heat heat from the bottom of the Bronco going up and less heat from the top going down. Whereas in an offset, we're getting top down heat and there's also heat below, which is kind of cooking the brisket more evenly, especially if you're rotating the brisket around and doing a lot of the tricks that I showed you in this video. So that is my conclusion for this video. I'm gonna to continue to primarily smoke on offset smokers, but I really do like the Bronco for cooks when I don't have time to pay attention to an offset smoker and keep feeding the fire and doing fire management every 20, 15 minutes or so. And I can just set and forget that Bronco and go and do other things and still have an amazing brisket like this one at the end of the day. So if you're deciding between a Bronco and an offset, I think it kind of depends on your uh, time that you have on weekends and your skill level. The Bronco is a lot easier to use and get better results. You have to do some stuff like refilling the charcoal once in a while. You have to know how to use the intake and the exhaust damper. And if you use a water pan, you can kind of shift it around to get different heat zones. So it's easy to use, probably difficult to master, but a lot easier to use and a lot easier to master than an offset smoker. So if you're a beginner, go for the Bronco. If you're more experienced, I would look at an offset smoker, whether that's a Highland or a Longhorn. They're both great units. Now I'm going to enjoy some more of this brisket, but before I do, I'm going to pour myself a little dram of the good stuff, a little bit of scotch, because nothing goes better with brisket than a little bit of scotch. This is actually a younger scotch from a newer distillery, Ardna Merkin, Argyle Western Highlands Scotland Distillery, barreled in uh, 2021, so pretty young. I think it's pretty lean in terms of uh, flavor. It smells good though, scotchy. Mmm, that's good flavor, actually. I could drink that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next episode of Smoke Labs on the Oklahoma Joe's YouTube channel. And if you guys want more content from me and you can't wait for that next episode, go check out my channel on YouTube. It's the Smoke Trails Barbecue YouTube channel. Go over there and give me some likes and subscribe. That'll really help me out. But until next time, cheers and happy smoking. Ah. <sighs>